Hello, this is Geo Techland, and today I'm going to be talking about the GNOME desktop environment, which happens to be my favorite desktop environment. I think GNOME is doing so many things well, and during my recent testing on their latest beta versions for GNOME, I think they're just getting better and better. But of course, there's many areas where I think they can improve on and gain more wider appeal. So I'm going to break this down for you and tell you what they're doing well, the areas that they can improve on, and without necessarily compromising their vision. So let's take a look. I think it was around 2010, 2011-ish when GNOME made a dramatic change to their look and feel. They had a more traditional, kind of like an old school Mac OS type of layout. And then when they released GNOME 3, they made a dramatic change. They went for a more minimalist style. So it's a very controversial move because a lot of the user base that was using GNOME did not like this new approach that they took. A more simpler sort of minimalist approach. And not that there's nothing wrong with that in the free and open source world here. I'm all about giving users, developers, the freedom to express themselves and have a vision for their environment or their app or their theme look and feel so i respect that choice by the gnome team but you can't deny that it probably alienated a lot of their user base and it's arguable that this change is what led to a lot of different windows like mac os like desktop environments to spring up in its place and even looking at it now in this gnome 41 version here I'm actually running the GNOME OS nightly that's used for testing. I'm running it through a VM so the performance may not look as smooth. But this shell that you're seeing now is very similar to that controversial GNOME 3 release. You don't see a dock by default. To actually load the dock, you gotta press like the Windows or Super key. And then you'll see the dock show up here. And then early on for the last almost 10 years or so, the dock was actually on the left hand side here and then they recently moved it to the bottom here don't get me wrong i'm definitely more of a minimalist type when it comes to especially the ui i think it'd be a good idea to leave the dock permanent on the desktop or at least give users the option and another thing is the minimize and maximize buttons ever since that gnome 3 shell it doesn't show those buttons at all and again going along with that minimalist approach their thinking is that to maximize users should know or i guess it's traditional enough that if you double click you maximize the window and that is how gnome's vision of the ui look and feel is i think this does alienate a lot of users especially a lot of new users coming to linux from mac os or windows where they're used to seeing a maximize and minimize button the GNOME team should try to accommodate those users that may feel alienated or confused about the dock not being enabled by default and the minimize and maximize buttons not being enabled by default. And I don't think they necessarily have to compromise their vision. They can always just give the user an option either in the setting, but probably ideally in a welcome tour. The way I propose they do it is that keeping in mind with their minimalist approach is to give the user two options. And I've actually come up with a mock-up design as an example. On the left-hand side, they can give their vision of using the OS and kind of let you choose a vanilla GNOME option. And then one option that enables a more traditional type of environment that enables the dock by default and keeps the minimize and maximize buttons. I think that change is very simple. You can still choose GNOME's vision, but also accommodate users coming from other environments. I also actually ran a few polls here. So starting with should GNOME enable the minimum and maximize buttons by default? And it looks like 51% said yes, 12% said no, 37% said give the user the choice in settings. And it was out of 78 people so far. And then for should GNOME make the dog permanently visible? We got 11% yes, 11% no, 77% give the user's choice and we got a whopping one. 133 people here and then over on twitter i asked the same question about the min and max buttons 33 percent said yes 44 percent said no 22 percent said give user the option and then for the dock to be permanently visible 33 percent said yes 66 percent said no although there was only three votes there and then on youtube here 39 votes 74 percent said yes 
15% said no, 15% give users the options in terms of the buttons. And then if GNOME should make the dock permanently visible, we got 48 votes, 23% said yes, 17% said no, and 60% said give users the option in the settings. But overall, it seems that people are wanting GNOME to either enable these things by default, or at least overwhelming majority seem to want GNOME to give the option. With that said, there's a lot of things that the GNOME team is doing very well. The upcoming GNOME 42 with the dark theme is looking really, really good. I don't know if it's the dark theme itself or GTK4, but it looks really good. It looks modern. And then even looking at their software center, their software center has seen huge improvements recently. If you go on an individual app, you can get a lot of information like the privacy rating, the download size, the versioning, how to support the project, get help and see reviews. I like that it is very integrated with Flat Hub or in Flat Packs here, which is my favorite way to download Linux apps. One of the other big controversies has been with their Lib Adwaita theming. And I may not be saying this correctly, but it seems like it's going to make it a lot more difficult for distributions to theme apps that are using the Lib Adwaita theme. And at first I was more against it, but lately I've been thinking more about it and I kind of realized that change may not affect a lot of what I do. Two of the apps I use a lot on my desktop are OBS and Caden Live. And both of those apps have never respected the theme of the OS. I think it's partially because they're QT apps, but Caden Live has always been in this breeze dark theme and OBS has been in their own dark theme. And even GIMP, which is still using GTK2, I think that includes its own UI or dark mode. And so this theme is really only going to apply and affect apps that are using it essentially. So it won't be as bad as I thought, but the Linux distros obviously would want to brand things in their own look, feel and style. And this theming somewhat takes away from that. But I also understand the other side where developers don't want other distributions to apply their own themes and change the look and feel of their apps and their branding and their icons. So I've been thinking, how do we compromise that? I mean, ideally, there should be an API that maybe lets you at the very least have certain dark theme variants and even some light theme variants enough to where distributions can still brand the look and feel. Another way to compromise on this is to maybe only apply the theme, the Libate way to theme to certain apps. For example, the settings app and maybe the shell itself maybe that can be set so that that could be configured by other distributions since i feel like the settings is really a function of the os and not not like a traditional app store created by an independent developer and maybe there could be some compromise there where libade way to is created to accommodate that maybe they can tell a distribution like pop os and be like okay you can theme the settings app the shell however you like Maybe even the software center, although Pop! OS ships with the app center. But let's say they decided to use the GNOME software center. Maybe they can be given the freedom to brand the look and feel here. Because now the argument for accommodating app developers doesn't hold there. So that would be another way to sort of compromise that. And don't get me wrong, I think the whole idea with free and open source software and then, you know, whether deciding a fork or or compromise is an interesting one. I think for the most part, a desktop environment, a distribution should try its very best to compromise. You know, that way we won't have multiple desktop environments, multiple software centers. But it is also true that at a certain point, if you can't come to an agreement, then it's best to fork. I think the model should just be try to compromise when, as much as possible, but people have different visions of a desktop environment then it's also okay to go their separate ways we just want to limit that as possible so again we're not making duplicate efforts i'm really excited for gnome's future they're my favorite desktop environments and so i want them to do very well and i'm really liking their upcoming dark mode it's probably my favorite dark mode now 
and they've already got a top-notch software center with their most recent releases. It's very well integrated with my favorite way to download apps, which is through Flatpaks. And so the last few years, they've really been setting themselves up to provide a world-class desktop experience on Linux. But again, I still feel that they're missing that one key ingredient, and that is to appeal a bit more to a bigger audience. They don't have to give up their minimalist design. They can provide a simple option to enable the dock and enable the minimize and maximize buttons. But I don't think they should do it only from a technical perspective. They should also do it to accommodate the new users that are coming to Linux. With the pending release of the Steam Deck, it's going to bring Linux to the mainstream and they're going to be curious about trying Linux. And I just think it's important that the GNOME desktop with its many perks can appeal to them and make users happy. And I think they can gain their support and GNOME as an organization can grow even more. But let me know your thoughts. Do you like their upcoming dark mode? What do you think of their software center? What are your thoughts on giving users an option to enable the dock and minimize and maximize buttons? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like my video, please like, share, subscribe, and I will see you all next time. If you're enjoying my video, you can subscribe to me on YouTube, PeerTube, follow me on Odyssey. You could also support me on LiberaPay, Patreon, and by shopping at Earth Hero. See links in the description below.